There's a lot of business owners listening out there. They're going, well, yeah, Liz, I want impact players on my team, of course. And so I want you to first cover the difference between a contributor and an impact player. Hmm. Well, a contributor is someone, it's not a low performer. It's someone who's doing a fine job. You know, smart, capable, hardworking, doing a fine job versus an impact player is someone who is not just doing a solid job, someone who's making an extraordinary impact and delivering work of inordinate value and really making a difference. And, you know, simply put, I, I, I see it as the fundamentally the difference between a position holder in an organization and a difference maker. Mm. Yeah, that's a, that's a great filter as you look around your team and go, who's really making a difference and who just has the title and they're skating by, they're doing fine. And we all want those impact players. Now, at Entree Leadership, we always talk about leadership as influence. So would you say that these impact players always have influence in the workplace? Well, they have to because these impact players come from all levels and all positions and all functions. And they're these type of leaders who who just act like leaders. And, you know, they're seen as leaders. And I think the reason why they're seen as leaders, regardless of where they sit in the organization, is because they see themselves as leaders, which means you have to subscribe to a model of leadership where, you know, leadership is about influence, whereas management is about power and authority. And, you know, it's about someone who's willing to take charge. But they see that it's like a job to be done, not a forever job, meaning they're willing to step up and take the lead, but they're as willing to step back and follow others. And, you know, it's funny, I studied leadership for a living and sort of a bit of an expert on leadership. But what I've really come to see is our power as leaders comes not from taking charge and stepping up and leading. It's this willingness to step back and follow others with the same energy and commitment, you know, and zeal with which we lead others. And actually, I think our power comes not from stepping up. Our power and influence comes from being willing to step back and treat other people like leaders. Yeah. That's empowering your team and kind of getting out of the way and being able to replace yourself. That's a huge part of this. And that's actually one of the practices of impact players that you lay out in the book. And so I want to cover, I'm going to just go through all five and we're going to unpack them real quick for the listeners. So number one, do the job that's needed. Number two, step up and step back, like you mentioned. Number three, finish stronger. Number four, ask and adjust. And number five, make work light. Those are very interesting. So let's st- jump into the first one here. Do the job what's needed. Is that what it sounds like? Can they actually accomplish their KRA? Well, this is how the impact players handle the messy problems of the workplace. You know, the problems that don't have owners at. It's not this department's job. It's not that department's job. It's not your job. It's not his job. It's it's an important piece of work, but it's nobody's job. And in these situations, the ordinary contributor they do their job, they do their piece. And you know what's fascinating is managers talked about these ordinary contributors as people who did their job brilliantly. I'm like, well, isn't that what you want? But the impact players are doing the job that needs to be done. Meaning they don't limit themselves to their position in the organization, their job description. They they kind of treat their job description as a, a starting point. Like or a base camp, like, hey, here's where I hang out so that when there's a problem up mountain, I'm in position to go there and be helpful. Yeah, they're a little rangy with their job. It sounds like they're not above any type of work. They're there to to problem solve and to serve the team. And if that looks a little different for that day and no one's owning something, they're just going to jump onto it because that's what leaders do. I love this. They're not above anything and they're not below anything. Meaning, like, hey, if there's a piece of work to be done and it's, you know, above your pay grade, you still go do it. You don't wait for the promotion. You don't wait for permission. You 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 do what needs to be done. Mm. So we've got that covered. Do the job that's needed. And then you mentioned this earlier. Number two, step up and step back. Mm. This is what we find that impact players do differently than others when it comes to unclear roles where there's a leadership vacuum. There's 
like a void. And we've, we've encountered these position situations all the time where you're in a meeting and, and you know you need to be collaborating and you know you need everyone there at the table, but you're not sure who's in charge. Or when you encounter the ambient problems of the workplace. And by ambient problems, I mean the leaky faucets. Like, you know, here's this business process. It's clunky. We all hate it. It's cumbersome. But you know what? It's not quite bad enough that you have to fix it today. You learn to live with it. Squeaky wheels, you know, um, leaky faucets. In these situations, you need somebody to decide to do something about it and someone to decide to just step in and take the lead. And, And that's what we find the ordinary contributor, they're willing leaders, but they're leaders in waiting. They're waiting for someone to come along and um, call them up to lead. Uh, it's got to fall right on their lap. It, fa- it has to fall on my lap. Someone has to tell me I'm in charge. And, you know, I spent 17 years at Oracle as an executive, and I can't even count how many times somebody said, well, like, I'll lead that, but will you send a note out and tell everyone I'm the boss? Like, I'll be the boss. But you've got to make me the boss. You've got to make people listen to me. Like the impact players, they don't have any time for that. They're like, you know what? This needs to be done. I'll step up and lead. And again, they do this without stepping on toes because they're not just these take charge leaders. They know when to step back, share the leadership, pass the baton. So they're leaders who build this influence because we trust them. We trust them to do the right thing, but we trust them to not always have to be the boss. Nobody likes working for that person. 